Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna be learning how to install and use Homebrew on the Mac operating system. So Homebrew is a package manager for Mac. So you can kind of think of it like apt or yum for Linux systems. Or if you're more familiar with Python, then you can think of this as being the pip of the Mac operating system. Now, this is going to allow us to install software using the command line in a nice and easy to use way. And I use this all the time for installing software or setting up new machines. I actually just got a new MacBook the other day and I'm going to release a video soon after this one showing how I use Homebrew to automate a large portion of the setup of a new development machine. But in this video, we're just going to learn the basics and how to use Homebrew in general. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, before we can install Homebrew, we need to have some command line tools installed. And we can install these easily through Xcode. So in an open terminal, you can install these by saying Xcode dash select and then dash dash install. Now I'm going to get an error here because I already have these installed. It says command line tools already installed. Uh, so I've already done that, but you might need to do that if you haven't yet. But once we have those installed, we should be able to now install homebrew. So right now I don't have this installed. If I try to run the brew command, I can see that I get an error and it says brew command not found. So to install homebrew, we can simply go to their website and I have that open here in my browser. And right at the top of their homepage, they have the installation command. So I'm gonna copy that and we can simply paste that into our terminal. So it's this command here. It's a, a Ruby command that's gonna run this Ruby script to install. So I'm going to open back up my terminal here. And now I'm just gonna paste in that command. And it's gonna run it automatically. And now it's going to ask us to walk through this. So I'm going to, and we're also gonna to need to put in our password as well. Uh, so I'm just going to let this install and I'm gonna pick the video back up once this is complete. Okay, so that installation completed, uh, we can see here that it says installation successful. So if you didn't have any errors, then Homebrew should have been installed correctly. So we can test this simply by running brew help. And if that doesn't give us an error and it actually shows us some brew commands here, then it means that that installation was successful. Okay, so now let's go over a few things and see how we can use Homebrew. So first of all, if you wanna list all of the packages that you can install with Homebrew, then we can simply say brew search. And we can see that there are a lot of packages listed here that we can install. Now, if we wanna see how many packages that is exactly, then we could pipe that into the Linux word count command. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the details of Linux commands in this video or piping commands, but if you wanted the total lines from that output, you could simply say brew search and pipe that into word count and then dash L will count the number of lines. So if I run that, then that should display the number of packages that were displayed with that brew search command. Now, if we wanted to narrow down those results and we don't wanna look through all 4,700 of those, then we could pass in a string to brew search as well. So let's say that I wanted to install Postgres and wanted to search for that package. So to do that, I could simply say brew search Postgres. And when I run that, it's gonna go out and search those packages. And we can see here that it returns a few results. So most likely to install Postgres, I would use that formula of Postgres SQL. Uh, now we can see that there are two sections here. One are, of these is called formula, and the other here is cask. Uh, we're gonna talk more about the differences between those in just a bit and see some examples of both. But basically, formula typically deal with command line software, and cask is an extension of Homebrew that allows us to install Mac OS native applications like Google Chrome and stuff like that. And we'll see more of that in just a bit. So that's how we can search packages using brew, but you can also view this in the browser as well. And I have this page pulled up here and I'll leave a link to these in the description section below as well. Uh, so we can see uh, in the browser here, all of the packages available here as well, along with a short description of each one. And you can also search within here in the browser too. So if I was to do something like Postgres, then we can see that it pops up those same results and then you can get more detailed information about each package. Okay, so now let's look at installing a package uh, using Homebrew. 
Okay, so one package that I like to install with Homebrew is called Tree. It's a nice simple program that prints out tree directory structures in the command line. So if I was to try to do this right now, uh, then we can see it says that the tree command is not found. So this isn't installed. So to install this with using brew, we can simply say brew install tree. And that's going to go out and install that package. And once that's finished, I'm going to uh, let this download finish here. And once that's finished, we should be able to now use that tree command. So right now I'm in my home folder, so I don't want to run tree here since it would show the uh, tree structure of my entire home folder. But instead, let me CD to my desktop and I'll look at the tree structure of one of my projects there. So I'm going to change directory into my desktop. And here on my desktop, I have my Flask blog application uh, from my Flask series. So I'm going to run tree on that. So I'll say tree and that's called flask blog. So I'm gonna run that and we can see that it shows a nice directory structure of that project uh, here within our command line. So I really like that program. It's a nice way to get an overview of a project or a directory. So that tree command is working nicely now that we installed it using Homebrew. So where does Homebrew actually install these packages? Now, if I run the which command to see the path to tree, if I say which tree, then it looks like that this was installed in user local bin, but that's actually just a symbolic link. I can see that that's a symbolic link. If I say ls-la, and now I'm going to uh, just copy this line here, and I'm going to uh, list out uh, that directory there. And we can see that this L here says that this is a link. So this is the link here, and then it's going to this location. So this is up one directory, which would be user local, and then it's in this seller directory, and then it installs it in there. So uh, that is where uh, Homebrew is installing these packages, is within this user local seller directory. Now, if we want to see more information about an installed package, then we can do that by using the info command. So well, let me clear my screen here. I'm going to say brew info of tree, and that's going to give us a description and where and when it was installed and also some analytic data. Now, if we look at the info for an uninstalled package, then it will show us the dependencies and things like that. So if I was to clear my screen here and say brew info node and node is not currently installed, then we can see here that it says not installed. And it also tells us what dependencies it needs and which ones we already have. The red X here means that none of these uh, dependencies are currently installed. And if we did have one of those dependencies installed, then it would instead be a green check mark. Okay, so yeah, that uh, info command can give you some pretty useful information. Now to uninstall a package, we can simply run the uninstall command. So brew uninstall tree. And that will go out and uninstall that tree command that we just installed earlier. Now, one really interesting thing with Homebrew is that we can use it to install GNU versions of certain tools that will overwrite Mac's BSD version of the same tool. Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of details there, but basically a lot of people like the Linux GNU version of some tools a lot more than the default Mac BSD version. So one of the example of that would be the grep command. So if I look at the version of the default grep command within Mac, then we can see that this says BSD grep. So this is the BSD version of grep. But if I look at the info for the grep package on homebrew, if I say brew info grep, then we can see that this says this is GNU grep. So that's the Linux GNU version of grep. So does that mean that if we install grep using brew, that it will overwrite uh, our Mac's default grep command? Well, not really, but we could do that if we wanted to. If we look down here at the caveat section within this information, then we can see that it says all commands have been installed with the prefix G. If you need to use these commands with their normal names, you can add the GNU bin directory to your path uh, for your bash RC, or in Mac's case, sometimes your bash underscore profile. So that means that the grep command is going to have a G prefix. So it's going to be G grep. So just to show you this, let me actually install that. So I'll say brew install grep and it's going to go out and install this and I will let this finish. 
And when that finishes, it shows us here uh, at the end that same caveat that it displayed in the info that this actually has a prefix of G and how we could set the path if we didn't want that prefix. So now we have grep installed, but that's going to have a prefix of G. So if it's do ggrep dash dash version, then we can see that that is GNU grep, but it did not overwrite my Mac version. This is still BSD grep. And again, if you did want to replace the default version of grep instead of using uh, ggrep, then you could do what they said and add that GNU bin directory to your path. Now, personally, I prefer the GNU version of tools in my day-to-day -day coding, but I don't have them installed anymore now that I'm doing these tutorials. I never want to have commands configured differently on my machine that might work in a certain way uh, that don't work for someone else who's following along with a video. Uh, so I would recommend these types of tools, uh, even though I no longer use them myself because I'm doing these videos. Okay, so now let's look at how you'd update packages. So first of all, to see what packages we currently have installed, we can simply say brew list. And we can see there that we have two packages. The other package here was just a dependency for grep. So if we wanted to update our packages, uh, none of these will need updates since we just installed them. But if we did want to update them, uh, it's a very similar process to something like apt on Linux. So we would just simply say, whoop, let me clear the screen here, we could simply say brew update, and that will fetch the newest version of all of the packages. And then if we wanted to view the outdated packages, we could say brew outdated, and that would show us all of the packages that have an updated version available. Then to actually update those outdated packages, then we would then say brew upgrade and run that. So anyone familiar with Linux, uh, that should be a familiar process because it's how it's done on there as well. Now, by default, Brew doesn't actually uninstall old versions of a package. So over time, you might accumulate old versions. But to remove those, you can simply run a command called Brew Cleanup, and that will go out and remove all of the older versions of those packages. So that might be something that you want to put into a cron job to run occasionally or something like that. Now, if you ever run into any problems with Homebrew and need to check your system uh, for potential problems, then Brew also comes with a self-diagnosis tool that does this for you. And that is called Brew Doctor. So if we run Brew Doctor, then that's going to diagnose your system and could let you know of any issues that it finds. And this might print out a lot of warnings here, but if I scroll up here to the top, you can see that we have a lot of warnings. But if I scroll up to the top, then we can see it says, uh, please note that these warnings are just used to help Homebrew maintainers with debugging if you file an issue. But if everything that you use Homebrew for is working fine, then please don't worry or file an issue, just ignore it. So Homebrew is working fine for me. I'm just going to uh, ignore that output. But if I did have any problems, then that output there can help the maintainers uh, possibly find what the issue is. Okay, so now let's look at what I think is one of the coolest things about Homebrew. So, so far we've installed some command line tools, but we can actually install Mac applications as well. And I usually use this when I want to write a script to easily set up a new machine. And the way that we install this is with a Homebrew extension called Cask, and it's super easy to use. So we just need to say brew cask install instead of just brew install like we did before. So for example, let's say that we wanted to install Firefox. We could could just simply say brew cask install Firefox. And if I run that, then that's going to actually go out and install Firefox for us. Now this can take a second since it's installing a larger piece of software, but I think it's a lot easier than going out to the Firefox website and going through their setup and then dragging and dropping the application to your applications folder and all of that. This is just one easy step to install this. Um, so I'm going to let this finish and then we'll pick up the video after this is done. Okay, so we can see here that it says Firefox was successfully installed, and it also moved that Firefox.app into my applications folder. Now, I uninstalled uh, Firefox before this video began, uh, so if I run this, then we can see that Firefox was actually reinstalled on my machine, so that worked properly. And sometimes when you're opening something for the first time, you'll get this warning here. I'm just going to go ahead and click open. And... This opened in the background here. So we can see that that installation worked and that uh, Firefox is working for us. So that's good.
and you can use Cask to install all kinds of different software. Uh, Brew Cask also has a search command, just like Brew has. So let's say that we wanted to install PyCharm. So let's search for that. So I'll say Brew Search, and I'll search for PyCharm. And when we do that, sometimes this takes a second to get results back. So we can see that we got a few results. But the first result here is probably the one that we want. Uh, now, if you're not sure if that's what you want, then you can run brewcask info on that package and it'll show you more information about that. So a lot of the brew commands are the same uh, with brew cask. So brew info and brew cask info. Now, if you're still not sure, then you can run brew cask home on a package and it will take you to the home page of that software so that you're sure it's what you expected. So for example, if I was to run brew cask home on that PyCharm package. If I run this, then it's going to open up the PyCharm homepage for us here in the browser. Now, like I said, in the near future, I'm going to release a video where I'll show you how I use scripts with Brewcast to completely set up a new machine and install all kinds of different applications such as Google Chrome, Sublime Text, uh, the fonts that I like, Spotify, and a few others. Um, okay, so now let's look at a few other things that you can do with Homebrew. So I'm going to close down my browser here and go back to my terminal. Now, sometimes with Homebrew, you're going to want to install a package that is located in a different repository. So far, we've only installed software from the core Homebrew repository, but we can add others. So to do this, we can simply tap a repository and then install the packages. So all of these are kind of Homebrew terms, you know, uh, tap, things like that. So for example, to use the Heroku CLI on Mac, it's easiest, in my opinion, to install this using Homebrew. But first, uh, we have to tap their repository. So right now, if I was to say brew search, and I was to search for Heroku, then once this search is complete, we can see it says no formula or cast found for Heroku. Then it spits out a little bit more information here, but the main thing is that it didn't find any formula or cask for Heroku. So in order to find that, we first have to tap the repository. So I'm going to say brew tap, and the name of the Heroku repository is Heroku forge slash brew. And just so you know, I just found that repository name in the Heroku documentation. I don't actually memorize stuff like that. Okay, so once we have that repository tapped, now let me do that same search. So I'll say brew search Heroku, and now this should return uh, the results from their repository. So we can see here, this is the repository name, Heroku forward slash brew, and these are the package names, uh, Heroku and Heroku node. So if we wanted to install Heroku, uh, the Heroku CLI, I could say Heroku, or brew install, sorry, brew install Heroku. And if I run that, then that's gonna go out and install that Heroku CLI for us. Okay, so now that Heroku installation completed. So really, that's all I wanted to show you as far as a broad overview to Homebrew. I think that covers about 99% of what most people would use Homebrew for. Now, if you no longer want Homebrew on your system, then uninstalling it is pretty simple too. They have a page on their website where they provide a script that does this for us. And I have that open here in my browser. So if I open my browser and go to their FAQ page, uh, I have this here at the top. How do I uninstall Homebrew? And it's this script here. It's just a, another Ruby script, just like they had a Ruby script to install. They also have one to uninstall. So I can copy that and go back to my terminal and I can just paste that in. And we can see here when we go to uninstall this, it says, are you sure you wanna uninstall Homebrew? This will remove your installed packages as well. So I'm gonna say yes. Now that's going to install all of the brew packages, but I don't think that install uninstalls the uh, brew cask packages. So I think Firefox will remain, uh, but it will uninstall things like grep that we installed. Okay, so that installation or uninstall was successful. Now if we type brew again, we can see that that no longer exists. And I'd say that ggrep no longer works either. So it was uninstalled. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully now you have a pretty good idea for how you can use Homebrew on the Mac and can see why this is so useful. Uh, like I said, I'll be doing a video in the near future where I set up a new development machine from scratch and I use my own custom scripts to go out and pull down a lot of software at once that might take hours to do manually without something like Homebrew. So it not only adds a lot of nice functionality to our machines, but it can also be a huge time saver. 
But if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.